Daniel was a regular at our bar, visiting twice or three times a week. Although friendly, he was quite reserved and didn't tell us much about himself. I knew that he had his own business, which seemed to be doing well, judging from his good quality suits and expensive looking watches. There were no red flags about this man, as he's never caused any trouble. Daniel was polite to everyone, and he also tipped well. So, when he asked me to house it, I agreed. He looked tired and asked for a double shot instead of his usual that night. When I asked what was wrong, he complained about his coming business trip and how he was worried about leaving the house for a few days. I suggested that he could hire someone to house it, and that's when his eyes lit up behind those metal rimmed glasses. That is a wonderful idea, Emma. Say, how much do you make working here? Um, uh, twenty an hour. Why? If you could take Friday off, I'll pay you 50 per hour to stay at my house. My eyes widened. It was almost ridiculous how much this guy was willing to pay to have someone look after his house. Daniel mistook my surprise as disappointment as he immediately continued in an apologetic tone. My, what was I thinking? Uh, of course it's going to take more than that to convince you to stay at my boring old house. How about... 80 an hour, yeah? That's... Daniel, you aren't living in a palace or some kind of haunted house, are you? <laughs> oh no, not at all. It's just an ordinary house. You see, there's nothing to worry about. It's just that I expect you to do a few things while you're there. Compared to what you're doing here, I'm sure it'd be super easy for you. He said that in a very nonchalant way, like it was no big deal at all. Looking back, I should have been more suspicious. I should have asked him right then and there what he intended me to do. It might have just saved me from what was about to come, but I was blinded by the offer that seemed too good to be true. I told Daniel that he had himself a deal and that would be by his house at 6pm on Friday. Daniel's house stood in a nice neighborhood not too far away from my apartment. It was an ordinary two-story house. A little old, but looked rather well taken care of. I found the key under the mat as instructed. As I entered, I immediately noticed that there was some lights coming from the living room. I also heard the low humming sound of a television which was weird since Daniel was supposed to leave for his trip hours ago. I made my way to the living room, and Daniel was there. He was sitting in a dark room, illuminated by only a television screen, which was showing some kind of advertisement. Daniel? I th thought you left. Yes, he left a few hours ago, he replied. And that's when I realized, this man was not Daniel at all. He looked almost identical to Daniel, but thinner and messier. Daniel always dressed well, whereas this guy was wearing an old t-shirt, sweatpants, and some indoor slippers. His hair was long and unkept. He didn't wear glasses, unlike Daniel. Something about him also felt off. His eyes were cold, almost emotionless. He also sat upright on the sofa, which was a weird pose to be in while relaxing and watching some TV. Oh, sorry, I mistook you for Daniel. You must be his brother. I tried to hide my surprise. Daniel hired me to house sit while he was away, so I didn't expect to see anyone here. He stared at me for a few seconds, as if he was sizing me up, then nodded. Okay. I think Daniel left you some notes in the kitchen. The note was indeed on the counter. It read, Emma! Thanks again for doing this. I apologize for not giving you a heads up on my twin brother, Thomas. He'll be there with you while I'm away. I totally understand that the situation is probably not ideal for you, but please don't worry about Thomas. He is a little weird, but is actually very nice. As long as you follow my instructions, I guarantee that everything will go very smoothly on your side. 1. This is the most important rule, and I cannot stress this enough. 
Do not let Thomas leave the house under any circumstance. No matter what happens, never give him permission or imply that he could leave. He might try to trick you. Don't fall for it. He won't try to leave without your permission, so there's no need to physically restrain him. 2. Please be polite to Thomas. It will make everything so much easier. Entertain him if you must. He won't ask for anything absurd, so please do what he wants to the best of your ability. 3. You can help yourself to anything in the fridge. You don't need to prepare anything for Thomas, but please join him at the dinner table, as that's the polite thing to do. 4. You can sleep in the guest's bedroom, but close the curtains. 5. Always lock the front door when you go outside. Keep the keys with you at all times. 6. If you notice that outside is pitch black, don't go out. Trust me on this, please. 7. Thomas won't harm you directly, but he will lie to get his way. Watch out. 8. In the morning, please water my plants in the yard. If you sense that Thomas is angry with you, use this as an excuse to go outside and just go home. Leave the key under the mat if you do so. I'll pay you another 500 if you manage to keep the house clean and tidy when you leave to compensate for your extra trouble. I left some money for you in the envelope. Good luck and stay safe. Beside the note was a little white envelope filled with blank notes. I gulped as I counted them. 500 in total. This guy was serious. Apart from keeping Thomas inside the house, the rest of the instructions were actually quite common sense. Locking the door, watering the plants, sleeping in the guest bedroom. These were not absurd at all. Not worth the $1,000 on Daniel's side if you ask me. I still didn't understand why Daniel would need me to look after his house if Thomas was there already. Perhaps he didn't trust his own brother. Well, he did look like a deadbeat to be honest. One question remained. Why was Thomas not allowed to leave the house? He was a full-grown adult who seemed to be functioning like a normal person. I thought about all the reasons that could explain this rule, and all the possible scenarios made me anxious. I should have trusted my instinct and left right then and there, but I didn't. Thomas did indeed creep me out a bit with his gaze, but he looked frail enough that I thought I could handle him if he were to try something weird. In other words, greed got the better of me, and I ignored my gut feeling. It was a big mistake. When I went back to the living room, Thomas was still watching the television. Hey, it seems like we'll be temporary housemates for tonight. That's fine by me. His eyes were glued to the screen. I hesitated. I didn't want to share dinner with this guy, but I wanted to follow Daniel's instructions. I'm having dinner soon. You're welcome to join me. Thomas turned to me and smirked. I would be delighted to. To call the dinner awkward would be an understatement. Daniel's fridge was a strange sight to see. Exactly half of it was filled with normal food like fresh fruit, pasta sauces, and vegetables, while the other half was filled with several Tupperwares full of raw red meat portioned into some kind of morbid meal prep. I reheated a box of frozen pizza from the freezer and saw Thomas pull out one of the meat Tupperwares. He emptied the container onto a plate and set it down on the side of the table. He then sat down and stared at me patiently, as if he was done preparing his food and was waiting for me to be done with mine. The awkward silence seemed to go on for eternity before the microwave gave out a loud ding, and I took my pizza out. Enjoy your meal, Thomas said. For some reason, his voice sounded sinister. I dared not comment on Thomas's disgusting meal. We just ate dinner in silence. The sight of raw red meat with blood still oozing from it almost made me gag. But Thomas was eating the whole thing like there was nothing wrong. The way he dug and cut his fork into the meat was precise and rhythmic, 
almost like a robot. I couldn't help but notice that he seemed to glance at my direction a lot. Not at me, but rather at my pizza. Finally, I gave in to his inquisitive gaze. Would you like some of my pizza? Thank you, but no, I cannot eat that. Are you, like, allergic to the ingredients? I guess you could say so. According to Daniel, there are many things I should not eat, but I would love to expand my diet. It is quite boring having the same meal every day. You know, I heard there are many great options around this neighborhood. Well, I don't really know this area too well, but I'm sure there are some decent restaurants. Can we go to one of them? His request caught me off guard. Huh? You mean right now? I would like to go out, please. The sentence sent a shiver down my spine. I immediately thought of Daniel's instructions. While I didn't understand the context or reasoning behind it, I didn't want to find out what would happen if I broke the rule. Well, we've already had dinner, and I'm not from around here, so maybe it's better if you just ask Daniel to take you later. Okay. That's a wise decision on your part. Thomas stood up and took his now empty plate to the sink. Well, if we're not going out, we're gonna watch TV together. The way he demanded me to spend time with him almost felt like I was babysitting this full-grown man. While Thomas was calm and oddly polite, I felt threatened by just having him sit at the opposite end of the sofa. Even without considering Daniel's ominous instructions, something told me that it was best to do what this man wanted. I regretted my decision to stay, but it was too late now. We sat in silence for a few minutes. I couldn't concentrate on what was on the screen. Thomas kept breaking the silence by asking me weird, personal questions like where I worked, where my home was, and if I traveled a lot. His conversational skills were abysmal, and I was an unwilling participant. So the conversation didn't flow or go anywhere beyond two or three exchanges before the silence crept in again. I wanted to tell him off, but didn't want to appear rude, so I endured his strange questions. The 7 p.m. news started, and it was about a recent assault. The reporter was interviewing the victim, who was recovering in a hospital room. This man lives in a weird-looking but spacious home, Thomas remarked. It took me a few seconds to register what he had just said. I could not believe that someone could be so sheltered and dumb. That's not his home. That's a hospital. Hospital? Thomas repeated curiously. What kind of place is that? I couldn't believe my ears. Was this some kind of dumb joke? I turned to see if he was smiling, but he was not. He just stared back at me, patiently waiting for an answer. Then it dawned on me. This man must be mentally challenged. That was the only explanation. That's why Daniel didn't want him to leave the house, out of embarrassment or in fear of his own safety. There was no way a man in his 30s wouldn't know what a hospital was unless he had some serious issues that affected his behavior and learning. I breathed it in and switched to babysitter mode. A uh, hospital is a place where people go when they're in need of medical help. So, if I'm in need of medical help, will I have to go to the hospital, which is outside? Thomas murmured to himself, then he turned to me. So, if you killed me... I would have to go to the hospital, right? That's ridiculous. I'm not gonna kill you. C can I convince you then? Again, what he said made my hair stand on end. His serious face made me feel like he was mocking me. No, and you're not leaving this place. I stood up. I couldn't bear spending another minute with this guy. I'm going to bed now. Good night. Thomas just stared at me blankly. Okay, good night. Don't forget to close the curtains. He didn't need to remind me. I grabbed Daniel's instructions and headed to the guest bedroom, locking the door behind me. The room was too close to the living room for my comfort. I could still hear a faint sound from the television. I looked outside the window, and it was pitch black. Not having any energy left to deal with whatever was going on outside... I just closed the curtains and hid under the blanket. 
I considered leaving right then, but I would have to break rule number six and walk past where Thomas was, which I really didn't want to do. I didn't know what the heck was going on anymore, and I didn't want to risk it. I texted Daniel, telling him that his brother was crazy and I would leave the place first thing in the morning. He didn't reply. Despite being nervous and scared, I dozed off eventually. I woke up again in the middle of the night to a loud thud and the sound of metallic objects clashing on the towed floor. I heard a faint cry and looked at my watch. It was 3am. I really didn't want to go outside to investigate, but I did anyway. Thomas was weird and unpleasant, but I still needed to check if he was alright. I tiptoed past the dark hallway. The television was in the living room, still on, but Thomas was no longer there. I saw light from the kitchen, and as I walked closer, what awaited me stopped me in my tracks. The knife holder was flipped. Several knives scattered across the counter as if there had been a struggle. Bloody handprints stamped onto the white marble surface. Behind the kitchen aisle, Thomas was lying on the floor with his hands over his chest. There was blood everywhere. His white t-shirt was dyed red and blood was spewing from his mouth. Thomas, what the fuck happened here? I rushed to him and pulled his hands off. The knife was still there, buried deep into his chest. Help me, Emma? Thomas whispered. His face was as pale as paper. S someone broke in. And they stabbed me. Oh god, I I'm calling an ambulance. Panic swept over me. I grabbed the kitchen towel to put it over his open wound. Thomas grunted painfully, but he also looked confused. What are you doing? I'm stopping the bleeding, so stop talking. I pressed the wound with one hand and fumbled for my phone with the other. No, you need to take... You need to take me to the hospital. I paused. My hands were shaking. Not because of the horrific scene in front of me, but because of the realization of what I'm about to do. Looking at his injury up close, I couldn't help but wonder how this man could still be alive. The knife was plunged directly into where his heart would have been. There was no way he could still be talking coherently, let alone having consciousness. Thomas noticed my realization and shifted his demeanor immediately. He grabbed my hand. His voice was no longer trembling with pain, but monotonic and emotionless like it had been all evening. Emma, take me to the hospital. Can't you see I'm in immense pain? I will die if you don't take me to the hospital. No! I tried to shake my hand, but he tightened his grip. A dying man would not have the strength to do this. You lied, right? You did this to yourself. How the fuck are you still alive? Let me out. I need to go out. I promise I will spare you. Let go of me, you sick fuck! I broke free, but my back was against the counter and Thomas was in my way. I stared in horror as he slowly stood up in a puddle of his own blood. He pulled the knife out from his own chest and tossed it away. He smirked. But, judging from the way he was glaring at me, I knew he was boiling inside. I had made Thomas very angry, and he could barely contain it. You are a very resolved young woman. He just stared at me as I fumbled for the knife. Daniel made a correct decision this time around. Bad for me, but good for the rest of you humans, I guess. <laughs> Stay away from me! I pointed the knife at him. He chuckled calmly, but then it was like a switch was flipped. Thomas grabbed the microwave and smashed it on the ground. If you had just let me out, none of this would have happened. Give in already. You can't contain me forever. He went on and started destroying other kitchen appliances in a fit of rage. And that's when I noticed that his face was melting like candle wax. The color was draining from his face into some kind of thick, fleshy goop combined with blood. And underneath was a face I would never be able to erase from my nightmares for the rest of my life. The face was dark. 
like a void of nothingness, with too many eyes and mouths that obviously belong to different people scattered everywhere. Thomas, or whatever that was pretending to be him, started to grin with all of his multiple mouths and started to laugh. His horrible laugh echoed through the hall as I ran to the guest bedroom. It was almost like the house itself was laughing. I locked the door behind me and covered my ears. I could hear Thomas wrecking havoc outside for the rest of the night. He also begged and demanded me to open the door several times, each time with different voices, but no way in hell I was gonna comply. The night continued to torment me endlessly. I didn't know if I had passed out, but when I opened my eyes, it was the next morning. Outside was bright out, and birds were chirping. I contemplated escaping through the window, but it wouldn't budge. My phone lost signal, so I had no choice but to leave the bedroom and confront that thing outside. The house was a mess. Wallpapers were torn up and furniture thrown around. Blood splattered on the wooden floor and seeped into the carpets. Thomas really gave his all when he was throwing his demonic tantrum. I tried to make a run to the front door, but I couldn't do so without passing the living room. The television was still on, playing static as if it had been smashed with a lamp. And, of course, Thomas was sitting in the exact same spot. He was waiting for me. He was back to normal, if he ever was normal before, albeit looking exhausted in his blood-soaked clothes. Good morning, Emma. Are you leaving already? I'm... I'm just gonna water the plants. I stuttered and quickly made my way back to the door without turning my back to him. Thomas didn't move, he just smirked. It was a lovely evening with you. I look forward to seeing you next time. I swung the front door open and ran outside as fast as I could. As I stumbled into my car, the phone gave a loud ding as I regained signal. There was a text from Daniel. He had replied to my message last night. I'm sorry you had to deal with Thomas, and I fully understand and respect your decision to leave, but please don't forget to lock the door when you go out. I hope you remember to keep the keys with you like I instructed. My heart stopped. I patted my shirt and my pants pockets, but the keys weren't there. I must have left them inside the guest bedroom with the rest of my stuff when I left, and I sure as hell didn't lock the door behind me just now. I looked back at Daniel's house in terror. The front door was open. Standing there in a blood-soaked t-shirt and sweatpants was no longer Thomas. It was me. Smirking. While Thomas was calm and oddly polite, I felt threatened by just having him sit at the end of the sofa of the sofa the health. Even without considering Daniel's ominous const constructions, what? <laughs> the night continued to torment me to- <laughs> so, Finally, I had given in to his inque- inque 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 The way he cut and dug his fork into the meat was precise and rim- Fuck. <laughs>